Hi, I'm Alex, a tooling engineer here at Haas. And today, I'm going to show you how to install our A6 dead length collet chuck. Collet chucks have some significant advantages over a traditional three-jaw chuck. They're smaller, so you get more tool clearance and your spindle can accelerate faster. They're also more accurate, don't lose nearly as much clamping force at high RPM, and grip your part with more surface area than a traditional three-jaw. These quick change collet chucks also allow you to change your work holding setup from job to job in just seconds. Unlike a pullback style chuck that will slightly move the material in Z while clamping, a dead length chuck precisely locates your material in the Z axis to the same spot every time and ensures your length dimensions don't drift from OP1 to OP2. You're going to want to begin by removing your current work holding setup from your lathe. We've already done that here. Check out this video on how to remove a three jaw or pullback style collet chuck if you need help. First, clean the spindle nose and make sure it's free from any nicks, burrs, or foreign material that will prevent the chuck from seating properly. A stone can be used to lightly remove any high spots. Prep the mating surfaces of the chuck's adapter plate the same way. Apply a thin coat of rust preventing oil to the mating surfaces and draw tube threads and install the adapter plate onto the spindle nose, aligning the drive dog with the recessed hole. Install the bolts finger tight to hold the adapter in place. Lower the draw tube hydraulic pressure to around 80 PSI. Use the foot pedal to retract the draw tube. The controller should show that the chuck is in the clamped state. If the chuck icon is visible on the controller, setting 282 needs to be changed from ID to OD clamping. Changing setting 282 to OD clamping tells the controller that the workpiece is clamped when the draw tube is retracted. Setting it to ID clamping tells it that it's clamped with the draw tube in the extended position. We're going to need to manipulate this setting to make installing the chuck easier and to ensure it functions properly when we are finished. So, coming back to our machine here, I have setting 282 set to OD clamping and I've used the foot pedal to make sure that the draw tube is clamped. Then, I'll use an M14 in MDI to apply the spindle brake. Torque the fasteners to 80 foot-pounds in a cross pattern. Press reset to release the spindle brake. Measure the axial and radial runout. Both should be less than two ten thousandths of an inch. The adapter plate locates on the tapered surface of the spindle nose and is not adjustable. If your setup has too much runout, remove the adapter plate and try cleaning it and the spindle nose again. Reinstall the adapter plate and verify the runout is within spec. Once the adapter plate is on and running true, use the foot pedal again to unclamp and extend the draw tube all the way out. Thread the collet chuck all the way on until it bottoms out. Back it off until the bolt holes are aligned with the threaded holes in the adapter plate. Use the foot pedal to retract the draw tube. The collet chuck should align itself and be drawn into the adapter plate. Verify that the bolt holes are still lined up. If adjustments are necessary, use the foot pedal to extend the draw tube and e-stop the controller just after the collet chuck unseats itself from the adapter plate. This will allow you to rotate the collet chuck into position and install the bolts. Once the bolts are loosely installed, release e-stop and use the foot pedal to fully retract the draw tube. Indicate the tapered surface in two places. The runout should be less than a thousandth. If more accuracy is needed, a soft hammer can be used to bump the collet chuck body to be true to within a few tenths. Use M14 again to apply the spindle brake and torque the fasteners to 30 foot-pounds in the same cross pattern. Verify the runout is still within spec. Switch setting 282 to ID clamping. The controller should say that the chuck is unclamped. Now you can install either the chip cover or part stop. The chuck should never be operated without one of these installed or chips will be able to enter the internal mechanism and damage the chuck. The chip cover can be installed by first loosening the three set screws with a four millimeter Allen wrench until they stop. They won't come out all the way. Then, align the dimples and flats on the chip cover with the set screws and flats in the chuck and install it into the chuck. It's a tight fit and can be tricky to install. Try to go in as straight as possible. Once it's seated, the chip cover should rotate freely a little bit in either direction. Fully tighten all of the set screws. If you're going to be loading slugs into your collet chuck, you can set up the part stop to locate your material in Z. Begin by loosening the three set screws and removing the chip cover if it's installed. Install a stud and lock nut onto the part stop plate. The part stop goes into the chuck the exact same way as the chip cover. 
Adjust the length of the part stop by threading the stud in or out. Use a deep socket to tighten the lock nut in place once the stop is adjusted to the length you want. Alternatively, you can assemble and tighten the part stop outside of the collet chuck if you've measured the distance from your part stop plate to the face of your collet. In our case, it's two inches, 320 thousandths. So if I know that I want to clamp on one inch of material, I'll go ahead and set my stop to one inch, 320 thousandths, and tighten it down before loading it into the collet chuck. It's a little bit easier to set up this way and no specialty sockets are needed. This also allows you to design and use your own specialty part stops that won't be able to be assembled inside the collet chuck. You can now use the collet installation tool to install the collet. After the collet is installed, increase the chuck pressure to your desired clamping pressure. Verify that the collet clamps and releases properly and the clamped and unclamped states match the controller. To remove the collet chuck, simply reverse the installation steps. Begin by using the collet tool to remove the collet. The part stop can remain inside the collet chuck as it's easier to remove from outside the machine anyway. Lower the draw tube pressure to 80 PSI. Chain setting 282 to OD clamping. The controller should be in the clamp state. Use M14 to lock the spindle and remove the four fasteners. Press reset to release the brake and use the foot pedal to extend the draw tube. The collet chuck should unseat itself from the adapter plate. Unthread the collet chuck and remove it from the draw tube. The part stop can easily be removed at this point by loosening the set screws and gently tapping it out. To remove the adapter plate, use the foot pedal to retract the draw tube into the clamp state. Use M14 once again to lock the spindle and loosen the bolts. Completely remove two of the bolts and leave the other two about halfway unthreaded. Use a soft hammer to unseat the adapter plate from the tapered spindle nose. Once the adapter plate is free, remove the remaining fasteners and the adapter plate. Thoroughly clean the chuck and adapter plate and apply a thin coating of rust preventative oil to it before putting it away for storage. Thanks for watching.